What is the common good? It is the answer to two questions. What do those who have put their faith in Christ have in common with those who have not? And what can the local church do to make the world a better place for them? The local church ought to understand differences and act on commonalities. God wants all neighborhoods to flourish, and they can't if institutions don't function well. Because of the conditions we find in under-resourced neighborhoods, there are three roles for the church to play. The first role is to empower. In Acts 1.8, Jesus tells his disciples, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God made Jesus king over all creation. Jesus' last act on earth was to give us the Holy Spirit to empower us. We are to go and do whatever needs to be done wherever it needs to be done. As we go, Jesus promises to be with us. I know of nothing more empowering than making disciples. To empower someone is to help them do something. Who doesn't need help navigating life? When people think about impoverished neighborhoods, they greatly undervalue discipleship. I'm not talking about the need for a vibrant small group program within your church. If the program is any good, it's just an excuse to disciple people. I'm talking about authentic relationships built over long periods. A healthy local congregation provides space for people to do life together to transcend the conditions they're in. The second role is to partner. In Matthew 16, 18, and 19, Jesus said to Peter, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the second time that I've said this scripture because it's very important. We need to understand that Jesus made a remarkable statement here. One day, Peter would be a leader in the church based on his revelation that Jesus is Lord. Peter never forgot this, as he later wrote in 1 Peter 2, verses 4 through 6, that Christ is the chief cornerstone and the church is to be a holy priesthood. He then went on to explain how the church should behave in difficult times. It's clear that the church is expected to be engaged in the world around it. It can't be silent, as our neighborhoods don't just need something good to happen. They need transformation. Through partnership, the local church plays a key role. Because of the way our neighborhoods have been formed, the community must be built from the inside out. When a congregation becomes an institutional partner with local businesses, schools, and so forth, it becomes a church with no walls, with a transformative influence. The third role is what I call reach. The Great Commission, found in Matthew 28, 16 through 20, states that the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The church is to seek the common good of the neighborhood by being a compassion and justice center. Reaching the hood is two sides of one coin. Evangelism is the transmission of the gospel message of the transformative power of following Christ. It's the local church's response on a personal level to issues of hood life. Justice, which is genuine pursuit for both peace among and respect towards individuals and people groups, is the local church's contribution to the common good. 